Nice. So I'll go to talk about the next feeling, respect. Nice. So, with the clarity of feeling of trust, now we'll talk about the feeling of respect. So, just try to find out when do we feel respected? When do I feel respected? Listen, not execute, but listen to whatever you say. That's respect. When the person listens to whatever you say, that he may not do exactly. That's not respect. When the person listens to it, okay. When the person sees value in whatever you say, that means respect. He respects you. When the person sees value in whatever you say, that means respect. Try to explore within. When do I feel respected? Oh, I feel respected. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm happy that why should be respected? What do I deserve to be respected? What is the question? Do we want to be respected or not? Yes. 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 Yes.
No, why? Right understanding means you're honest. Correct. That's what. That's, that's what, what he's trying to tell. Right no, no, understanding. No. Right understanding. No. So if you have understood rightly, then you have done it honestly by default. Uh, wait, wait. Right understanding evolution is not the right word. Right. If you, wait, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Right understanding. We are taking it as a common wait, wait. word. If right. When you evaluate yourself in a right understanding, you have honestly evaluated you. Okay. Right understanding is it's a right evaluation. Right Honest evaluation. Right evaluation, right evaluation you can do only we have a right understanding. It is Honest interrelated. Right understanding if we have when we do a right understand we are doing it honestly. Wait, wait. If you have done a right understand you will do right evaluation. Anupama, that is the, the right, continuity. No, no. The right is a it has got many meanings to it. Honest has many meanings to it. Right man we can it's right side also. You can be on the right side, but still you are wrong. But here we so are in right a, only, no, no, sir. That's not the, no, wait, no, wait, you wait. can't do that. Sir, honest sir. evaluation is important. <laughs> it should be honest evaluation. When you are saying you are always assuming that I am right. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right to me, but you are right to somebody else. You are missing the point here. Honest is what yourself. Yeah, wait, wait. So it may be the case that I am trying to do it honestly. But I am colored by preconditionings. What we are evaluating, sir? <laughs> the right can be polarized too, the same way. If you are challenging that way, right can be polarized too. Yeah, so I am coming uh. to what is right. I am coming to what is right. So, this is my level of competence. This is my level of competence, isn't it? Can I evaluate it rightly? This is what we are trying to explore. If I do not do it rightly, there are three possibilities. One possibility is that I over-evaluate myself. I evaluate myself to be more competent than what I am. This is over-evaluation. The other possibility is I evaluate less than what I am. No, I am not saying that. So you have to evaluate yourself. But can it be construed as a superiority complex and inferiority complex? It can lead to that. Yes. Yeah. And the third possibility is otherwise evaluation. I evaluate other than what it is. Yeah, these are all wrong evaluations. Yeah. I'll come to that. For example, it may be the case that your child did very well in the examinations, isn't it? And you became so happy with the child, you became excited, you started calling the child as my king's son. He's the king, he's the boss. Right? You do it once, twice, thrice, and the child starts assuming that I am the boss now. <laughs> so every time a neighbor comes to your house, you start explaining, you see, he has been the topper in his class, and you just see his report card so bright, and I can't see a single child in the whole colony like him. Now gradually, by doing all this, the child starts over-evaluating oneself. This is over-evaluation. The next day, some guest comes, and you ask the child, to bring a glass of water for the guest, and the child says, I am the boss, why should I? <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's a very good thing, except I have a one, the way we have been brought up is, when we do well, when anybody comes and asks your parents, they say, how he has done? Yeah, he has done well, but you know, we'll see what happens next semester, or next year. Yeah, he has done well 10th or 12th, how is he doing, going to do? They never say it. In, our, in the new system right now, when they pass even 10th, but 90%, oh, he's the best in the whole wide world, so we say it like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a big, big transition in the way we express the um, excitement uh, differently nowadays, and that sends a wrong signal to the kid. <laughs> when we do something, what? In the work environment. Environment, what do you do? When we do something also, we teach either by asking for someone, what did they can do? In fact, I do the other way. I think I have, I have not done very well as much as I should have done, but VC will appreciate it anyway. It's okay with me. But I always think that I haven't done the best I can do always. 
Yes. Correct. <laughs> because in, honestly, I uh, no no. Honestly, I'm capable of doing it, but I haven't done it because of less time or because of whatever it is. So, Hannah, if this happens and you tell the child to bring a glass of water for the guest, the child says, "I am the boss. Why should I?" And then you are angry, and then you start complaining about the child. From the time he has succeeded in examination. I don't know what he assumes about himself. He's good for nothing. Doesn't do a single thing in the house. Now saying that this is good for nothing is under evaluation. Earlier calling him the king's son, the boss, isn't it? That is over evaluation. Saying that he's good for nothing is under evaluation. This kind of fluctuation may take place in our behavior. Does it happen? Now the next time when another guest comes and he's still disturbing you, Right? Not allowing you to talk. You can ask him to move out of the room and this boy is not moving out of the room, playing still in the room. And you become so angry that you call him a donkey. This donkey is a hell. He has made this whole house a hell. <laughs> now calling a human being a donkey is otherwise evaluation. This creates an issue here now because if you go to the ISO and CMMI levels and everything, if you take it, they always believe in continuous improvements. So if you think that you've got right evaluation done, you stop it. You never do continuous improvements. How can you do like this no. in, a, in an environment like that? See, doing right evaluation, you are able to see that this much is lacking. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> when you do the right evaluation, then only you can improve in the right sense. Otherwise, you may go for under, over, otherwise evaluation. So for the right set, you have to do the correct yeah, right so evaluation. I am able to see that this much is lacking in me. I have to improve it. It's not that I am going to improve when somebody condemns me. No. So this is not acceptable naturally. If, if I don't do the right evaluation, it will never be yellow. If I do an under evaluation, it will be a red or a, a black. If the over evaluation, be more yellow will be there, right? Yeah. So in that case, the evaluation itself gives you clearly the yellow, red and black. Then why over under will come in? Because See, you are not able to do it. Not able to do what? Right evaluation. No, 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 no. Only after doing the right evaluation, I have concluded that I have done this by natural acceptance, this by sensation, and this by this. I have done it. Right? So automatically, when I define that clearly, I have done the evaluation properly. That is right evaluation. Then you will not be doing wrong evaluation, as simple as this. When you have done the right evaluation, you will not do the wrong evaluation. If you don't do the right evaluation, then the wrong evaluation will take place. Isn't it? So you can observe for yourself in our interactions, in our family, with our friends, how many times you know, do we do the right evaluation? How many times we do the wrong evaluation? One simple question. When you draw, the, go back to the first slide and the, and, the, and the trust only. So the trust slide, what you have currently right now, will go through a transformation or a change after evaluation on the, on the, on when you go for every, every no, relationship. No, I can have the trust innately that everybody wants to have the complete imagination guided by right understanding. Everybody wants which to Which is do, true, which is yeah. true. That, that's clear. That that's intention given. part is clear. That's given. Then you evaluate it. Then you go. Before respect, there's a trust there, right? There's a, before respect, there's a trust there, right? Yeah. In the trust, I have drawn a chart like this, right? After doing the evaluation, the chart will, be, it will change or will not change? That's a question I'm asking you. Because these are the, some of the natural acceptance traits. Based on that evaluation, I do the trust analysis and I draw a no. chart. The trust doesn't require any analysis. The trust is very much there because I'm able to see that the intention is pure. So that Whatever. Means that in that point, everything should be yellow in that case. No, no, no. Uh. See, see, there are two different things. Okay. This is intention. True. This is your competence. Correct. Intention is pure. Agreed. Competence is lacking. This has to be enhanced. This so doesn't have to be enhanced. You are, you, are, you are not understanding me. There are nine feelings you have it, right? So we are coming to the respect right now from the trust. Am I right or wrong? Right. When you go to the trust, you have drawn a chart like this based on natural acceptance and sensation and desires. You have done that chart or not? You have done the chart, right? At that time, I have not done the 
evaluation yet. Am I right or wrong? So okay. what is trust according to you, first of all? A right evaluation, right? That's no. what he said. <laughs> so I explained also, trust is able to, being able to see that everybody intends to be happy, everybody intends to make the other happy. So the intention is pure. So this particular thing is innate to every human being and is universal. This is trust. This competence will vary from person to person. Intention, that is natural acceptance, is the same in every human being. This is something that I can see very much. Oh. Intention is not evaluation. Trust is not evaluation. Trust is to be able to see that intention is perfect. There is no problem with the intention part. The problem may only be the with the competence part. Now I go to evaluate the competence. So with respect to Trust, respect, you do the evaluation again. Yes. <laughs> so this is disrespect. In fact, one, yeah. <clears throat> Take a mic. Say there is a very senior person in the family who's... Uh, Okay, it might be disrespect from my part, who's a waste, who has not taken care of his family, who's a drunkard. But he is very senior to me in age. Definitely, my evaluation of him is not going to be, it might be the right evaluation, but I cannot show my disrespect to him, right? So, I'll see. Because that of his age. I, I, so, I will have to respect him, irrespective of what he is. So, is that okay? Yeah, so when I have to express to the other, it's not only the competence that I will express, I will also express certain other things. I can see for the other also that the other intended to live the right way, but he did not have the right understanding. So when I am expressing to the other, I first of all appreciate the intention part. Your natural acceptance is fine, only that you could not understand it properly. And that's how you entered into so many you know, wrong habits. And that's how you have not been able to take care of the family. But as I cannot show disrespect to him, right? Though and my, I will have to evaluate him and write. And but write I can him. always get into dialogue with him or her, isn't it? It may take time. The versions may be different to express to the other. But I, I, I can always get into dialogue with the other. It may not be that I have to get into dialogue all the time. Maybe somebody else can also convey. Many times with my behavior, the things get conveyed. I am not reacting to the other, but I am the way I am living. It demonstrates to the other that this is the right way to live. So, irrespective of what anybody is, we should respect them. So, I rightly evaluate. When you say I respect, I rightly evaluate. So, I rightly evaluate every human being and make a program accordingly. Sir, is there any evaluation metrics are there? Because yes. Uh, I'm coming to that. For, um, if you have given an example of an uh, education of, about the son or daughter, because the metrics are varying. Um, the, say for an example, uh, in, uh, in uh, schools itself, there are different types of competitive examinations are there. Based on one, one competitive examination, we are either over-evaluating over or under-evaluating a kid. Uh, in the same way, other, uh, as ma'am mentioned, other family situations also, the evaluation metrics will be keep changing. So who has to fix the metrics and uh, are we all following the metrics? Can there be some metric which is universal? Let us look into that. It's not possible. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> so we can I see that, yeah. In this one, we are talking about relationship, right? This whole section. So why do we come up with the respect of yourself? Because when I was saying something, everybody confused me saying that you respect yourself. But it's a respect towards the other individuals, right? Because we're talking about, we're in the second section of I rightly evaluate myself as well as the other. So I respect myself as well as the other. When we are able to see that respect is right evaluation, I evaluate myself first and then the other. Isn't it? So you'll see that, that this is not acceptable to us naturally. It's a right for One girl, she attended this workshop in Punjab and then before the workshop there was a sports tournament, she won a trophy and after the workshop she went home and when she went home she just kept the trophy on the uh, dining table 
and rushed to the kitchen. Her mother was there in the kitchen and started explaining to her, you see, you always doubt my intention. My intention is pure, but you do not have right understanding. And she kept on saying blah, 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 so many things for 10 to 15 minutes. Her mother was listening. In the meantime, what happened? Her younger brother was playing outside, came to the house, and he came running to the house, and he collided with the dining table, and the trophy fell down. When she heard the noise of the trophy, she came out of the kitchen and started shouting on the younger brother. Then her mother came out and said, now you're able to see that his intention is pure. <laughs> so this is the way we commonly make mistakes in our relationships, isn't it? Let me cite another example. When we are conducting one workshop in Kanpur, and the workshop was conducted for the family members in the evening from 6 to 9. So one lady shared there that after going home, she was cooking in the kitchen. And then she found some noise of glass panes breaking. So she had two sons. And then she found that they were playing in the veranda. And the boy hit the ball. And the ball hit the uh, glass pane. And it broke. So the first thought that she had when she came and saw this, that let, her, let me slap them first. But then she was reminded of this right evaluation, intention, competence. So she did not slap. <laughs> no irritation, no opposition. So she told them that, okay, you move to the side. I will collect the glass pieces. Then she brought a piece of cloth, collected the glass pieces. And then when she was leaving, the older one asked, will you not hit me? Then the younger one said, no, nowadays she is attending a workshop. <laughs> yeah. So do we have to go for tea break? Okay. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Okay, nice. Because uh, two o'clock we will be here now. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now just see, everybody in the family wants to have respect, isn't it? If there is a small kid in the family. Let's say if there is a small kid in the family and some guest comes to the house, you just observe the activity of the child, what he or she does. Then the child will come to the drawing room. Okay? He will start playing here and there, just to draw attention. You don't pay attention, then the child will come and sit in your lap. You still don't pay attention, he will turn your face to him, talk to me, not to the guest. What is intending? He wants to have attention. He wants to have respect. You become angry and then you say, you donkey, go, get down. He has got some attention at least. <laughs> so the child also wants respect. We generally say, respect elders. How about the youngers? The youngers also want respect. If there is an elderly person in the house, an old age person in the house, you will see he also wants respect. If some guest comes to the house, okay, and you are sitting in the drawing room chatting with your friend, he will come to the drawing room just to draw attention to him. But you don't introduce that he is my father. Then he will be moving here and there, settling things which are already settled. Does it happen? You still don't introduce him. Then he will go to the other room, cuff in the other room so that you are able to pay attention. You still don't, pay, don't introduce him. Then after the friend has gone, he will start complaining. You, know, you call rascals to the house. You, know, you don't know how to you know, interact in the house. This is not proper. This is not right. What has gone wrong? You have not respected your father. So everybody wants respect, wants to have the feeling of respect. But somehow by ignoring the other, we are disrespecting. Or exaggerating about the other, we are disrespecting. If some friend of yours comes to you and starts appreciating you, for something which is not there and start doubting something is wrong and you know, he wants to have some money from me or what you know <laughs> so respect is yeah respect is right evaluation otherwise whenever the respect the evaluation is not right it is disrespect a common kind of otherwise evaluation is when i consider myself to be the body when i consider myself to be the body i consider the other also as the body so assuming the human being as body is a common disrespect. And that's how we keep on, you'll see, dominating on the children. 
<laughs> you just see, we keep on dominating over children, dictating to the child, assuming that they will never understand. Does it happen? In place of proposing to the child, we keep on dictating to the child, do this, don't do this, this is right, this is wrong, this you should be doing, this you should not be doing. What is this ultimately? We are disrespecting because we are not helping the child to explore, to evaluate and we are under evaluating. I object to that. <laughs> <laughs> Do's and don'ts, you have to say it with a reasoning. If you don't say the do's and don'ts without a reasoning, then you are right. The reason is, the kid is about two-year-old kid, right? It is jumping and touching the oven. You allow the other oh, oh, I think, let him try it. He will never do that. He cannot experience that. But again, the do's and don'ts, you have to say it, but with the proper reasoning so that the kid understands. Yeah. So there also the reason that I have found out, I can help the other, have an exploration, have some discussion over that. So I can ask the child, do you want to get hurt touching that electricity line? He will say no, that's all. If you tell him don't do that, then he will have the inquisitiveness to touch it first and then see. <laughs> Otherwise, you will not touch. That's not true also, because I was thinking of the, the real life situation. He doesn't know that the sea is a glass ceiling, right? The oven is it's closed, okay? But it's hot when you touch it. So that kid will go near it and say, say do, so immediate reaction is don't touch it, right? In, in Tamil, in Hindi and everything, that's all you will have, right? Oh, if you touch it, it will be very hot. You won't say like that, because the kid is going to touch it. So don't, that's what you say it right away. That's a reaction, right? Oh, you have to say, oh, I got to say it rightly. Please do not touch it. Always, it will be very hot if you touch it. Please, don't. by the time you already no, touch it. No, but I can always <laughs> ask the child, do you want to get hurt or not? And then I can explain to the child, if you touch this wire, you may get hurt. If you touch the heated plate, you may get hurt. That is possible. Yeah. Now, with some discussion, it becomes apparent to the child that if you are saying something in terms of do's and don'ts also, you are not dominating but rather you are instructing. That is fine to some extent. But again, we have to come back and help the other child, help the child explore. If that exploration sets in the child, that is going to continue lifelong. And today also if you see, in fact, while we are teaching also the pedagogy that we are trying to adopt, to help the other explore by oneself. In place of doing spoon feeding, yeah, doing spoon feeding, we are giving project based learning, we are giving hands on exercises, internship, why we are doing that? So that the child learns by oneself, exploring. You, what you do is, generally, you build a base, then you have a self exploration, then you build another base, that's how you do things generally, that's the right way of teaching, or the right way of learning, general teaching, right way of learning. First you build a base, then let the kid evaluate and find out its own way and how to do it, then after about a while, when you come to the 10th or 12th, you put another base, so that's the way, see, what are you trying to do here now? Self-learning is learning something correctly and faster. That's the right way. Anyway. Am I right or wrong? You're learning something correctly and faster. For that, you have to create an environment in which self-learning, if you just let it go for all the time, it will never happen. You got to put a foundation yeah, first. So here also if build you see, something, self-learning. We talked about trust first, then we are talking about respect. We created a base first. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. So do you feel comfortable or uncomfortable when you are over evaluated, under evaluated, otherwise evaluated? So you can have this evaluation. So this is my current state of competence. This is the level to which I am able to understand and this much is misguided by preconditioning or sensation. So when I evaluate myself rightly, I can see the level of competence that I have. If I assume it to be this much, this is over evaluation. If I assume it to be this much, this is under evaluation. And I can otherwise evaluate also by assuming myself to be the body. Or assuming physical facility to be happiness. Isn't it? So these are common mistakes in the relationship. This over, under, otherwise evaluation. It is generally said that when the husband remembers the date of birth, of the wife, this is a good husband. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> so similarly on the other hand, something may happen, isn't it? So many times out of these, we keep on over, under, otherwise evaluating. How do you know 
that you have done the right evaluation of yourself so that no how do you know that how do you how do you know yeah. that you have done the right evaluation it so happens that with my current level of competence i try to rightly evaluate myself and then i try to see what is right and in that process of right evaluation i develop the right understanding this is the way it happens i rightly evaluate myself i am able to see that this much is lacking in terms of competence and then i evaluate myself and then i am also able to see my intention part my potential and then i evaluate myself further and then develop my competence level is to evaluate itself is where it's fault the ability to evaluate the competency itself is lacking in what am i supposed to do yeah and that's, that's where the how, challenge will come and that's how since i'm not happy i again look into my natural acceptance and develop myself so in that process of continuous evaluation of myself i develop myself this is the way it happens in education can you more time please in the process of continuous evaluation of myself i develop myself and i become competent in the value yes 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 but that even how do you verify it how do you verify it that you have done the right evaluation so that one part is i look within myself whether i am aware of my preconditionings or not whether i am aware of my sensation or not the dependence on sensation for happiness i look within myself Secondly, I look into my conduct. If I'm getting irritated, if I'm getting angry upon the other, certainly my competence is lacking. But I don't know all the criteria for it. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. I think that turns into ego. Anna, this under evaluation, otherwise evaluation turns into depression. And then we can see that we keep on fluctuating between ego and depression. If things happen my way, I over evaluate. If things don't happen my way, I under evaluate. I am able to compete in the examination. I may have a feeling that oh, these are just dummy examinations. You know? I can do anything in the world. And the next time when I do not succeed, I can't do anything in the world. You just see the J results come, and so many news of suicide from quota coming. Why? So the child runs into depression. See, we might might be feeling that from outside, eh, the IITs have such kinds of students, and they are doing so good in academics. But if you try to see what is happening in their self, what is happening in their imagination, if the child is not getting A grade, eh, na, how much depressed he or she is feeling? Others are mocking at him, right? How much stress he is carrying within? Why the students are committing suicides in IITs? In the eyes of the society, they are highly potent, highly competent. But in their own eyes, they are not competent. And compared to other people, that's it. Yeah. So this kind of fluctuation keeps on taking place when I am not doing the right evaluation. Agreed. And that's how we can see that ego and depression, even in our own life, and we can see this. In fact, in the colony where I am living, one person, now he's 60 years of age, but his mother has been interacting with me. He appeared for UPSC examination. twice or thrice and he could not succeed and then he had a serious doubt on his potential and then he ran into depression and presently also he is not fully active all the time you know bowing his head down and just walking like that he has a doubt that he does not have the potential and he is not 60 years of age 40 years have passed like that such kinds of depression may occur there is a wrong image of himself right that yeah yeah one girl came to one workshop in triple it hyderabad and then she was relating about her life and then she told that she was earlier in some european country where his father was there then they had a divorce and then he brought his daughter to india then she met a uh, psychiatrist there and she told at that time she was 16 years of age she met the psychiatrist and told that i am getting into depression the psychiatrist tells what is your age she says 16 oh this is very natural that does, does happen you know <laughs> because you have failure in relationships you have failure in academics and a career so this does happen yeah here we don't <laughs> accept this to be a normal scenario there might be the case that people have accepted it as a normal scenario you have failed in your relationship you get depressed 
Now you have failed in examination, you get depressed. Sir, uh, yeah. I think only frequently, uh, maybe around uh, 20 years, uh, less than 20 years, you are speaking more about this depression and uh, other, uh, this word. Previously, I don't think, uh, yeah, see, even here, uh, I've seen, seen uh, news, newspaper articles and also here, as you say, the students are getting into depression and all. Uh, these are all uh, the words uh, which is now uh, spoiling our, uh, our own younger generation. So yeah, I yeah. think uh, this See, word so itself... Yeah, uh, so yeah. the expectations have gone high. Move from dictionary. Yeah. The expectations have gone high. Evaluation is not right. Pardon? Understanding no, okay, we should, is uh, we should, uh, we should And uh, there is so much of attraction from outside world to get no. this many facility. You know, those no. many opportunities and that's how the children are having this kind of feeling. No, we should may, we teach our children to take things as it is, not like acceptance. See, that, that is what we have to uh, bring in in our uh, children, younger generation, not like um, uh, having this type of uh, going into this. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. also, this word also we should not use uh, because why I am saying I am getting I a student, uh, he is now, uh, she is in first year uh, and she is uh, getting into my uh, room and showing some medical uh, the, and, 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 and then I asked her what is your problem. She is saying that uh, I am depre having depression sir, <laughs> I am having medicines for that. So uh, now how you know that, uh, how, how, where you meet the doctor and all and she is saying that online. That is phone call or something she is calling and then there uh, they are able to access uh, uh, how she is, I don't know how this is happening and all. But she is taking some medicine and without knowing uh, whether she is having the problem or not. So uh, that's what, so it is now very common word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I very alarming. See that there is wrong evaluation here, so there is disharmony within. Then there is tension, then frustration, then depression and finally this may occur. I I have a problem with this again. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you, if whatever he says that if you are content with that, you will never shoot for the stars. The question right now is, it, it has got nothing to do, it's, got, it's got everything to do with dialogue. You can shoot for the star, you can fail, still you can be happy because you shoot for the stars and you got something out of it. The why, question why right now is dialogue, is the dialogue, see again, the, then you can say, okay, fine, whatever I get is okay. I'm I will not saying live that like also. That. See, ultimately the purpose is to shoot to the stars or to have completeness of right understanding. What is that, complete of? Completeness of right understanding. Is it the committed state? I, actually, what is my basic aspiration? The, the is, problem is, if I'm appearing for the UPSC like you the exam, you said, I don't know whether I'm competent or not because I've never tried. It's not verified yet. So my evaluation at that time is fine, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to, I'm going to try for it. So I try it and then I know very well how well I have done. So then I have the right level of competency being analyzed in my mind. Then do it again. So you don't have to worry about you know depression right away. There's no need for an ego right away. If a past probably you have an ego, probably that's a different thing. We don't want to talk about it. But depression coming is again how do you really have a sensible evaluation of yourself and if there is a support available with the parents, talk to them. I, I have never seen, a, there, there, it is happening nowadays, I agree with him 100% it's happening nowadays. But I, the problem is if you say, take it whatever it is comes to you. I'm not saying that also. And See, that's not good. I'm not saying that. What is being said here, I need to develop the competence. Yes, so my goal has to be set. Sir, the parent my support. Uh, parent support is very important, sir, because two, three cases, uh, as a, as a student cases, I have seen, and uh, they are not. Uh, one uh, father is living in uh, the Dubai. problem is parents the are also par taking medicine of depression. <laughs> 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 See, another point is media is also uh, responsible for this type of uh, uh, suicide, etc. Because Pardon? media is propagating all those things. For example, NEET exam is a common exam. Yeah. So even a student is not able to score 10 marks, he uh, undergone suicide. So it is not a good practice. So they know what is the capacity. Okay. So they have to accept the failure or whatever the marks they got. In the Both the things are occurring here. There are cases when the students run into depression because they are not able to succeed. On the other hand, 
if the parents are asking them to study, they are saying that you are uh, uh, pressurizing us. You are dominating over us. Okay. No, instead of <laughs> projecting the real fact, the media should teach the students. So this should not be happened like that. They ought to teach, but they are not taking care of that. Because See, the students uh, shouldn't be not help. Was? Ultimately, the media itself is helpless. Yes. See, if one is helpless by oneself, then how can you help the other? So ultimately, it boils down to developing the right understanding. Correct. So when I'm doing the right evaluation, then I have self-confidence. Correct. Also, they are putting in the newspaper, uh, la last six months, uh, six students suicide in IIT Madras. In uh, another in IIT Delhi or IIT Bombay. IIT Bombay now, I think last week or so I saw in the paper, they have changed the system of this evaluation. Now they Let are me not say that now design. a new design of fan is coming. If somebody hangs from the fan, fan will come down. Yeah, that, they have designed here in IIT Madras. And I because think IIT they are Madras expecting that in any house this may happen. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> this fan is not going to be purchased you know, in, while constructing the houses. No, especially in IIT Bombay, uh, they have now changed that uh, evaluation system, sir. They can go for second attempt or uh, like that they have brought in. So yeah, see, this is happening is also. Mm. This is happening at the NEP. It is saying that you can exit any time. Correct. With the great credits, you can exit any time. It can happen in the first time too. See the, it can happen in the first time too. But that is not the right solution. I am saying that is not the complete solution. The complete solution is when you are able to develop the right understanding. Okay. Otherwise, the solution for the student to prevent the suicide instead of giving that it is not an evaluation. Pardon? Um, Making the fan like that for avoiding the suicide is the wrong right evaluation or wrong evaluation? I am saying this is not the solution. The solution is to remove the feeling of depression, suicide. Sir, my question so, is. The student came to the problem. Now I am writing well. One faculty given the more mark, and I, up to his expectation, another faculty not given the mark. Uh, that faculty is just this. This the, the, the evaluating faculty is fair because he has got know this thing. Whereas the other one who write the exam is not vested interest. Let the whole thing is done. So in that way, we, 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 we no. So that's why I am the clear estimation. That's why we Correct. say that you show the the answer sheet to the students. And ask them whether this is right evaluation or not. How much mark should I give? Anytime when the student argues with you, you ask him that this is the model solution, you tell me how much marks I should give. Isn't it? So, so when I am doing the right evaluation. Sir, what is your uh, suggestion, sir? If a student comes with a depression, as a faculty, as a faculty, how we should handle them? See, if a student comes with a depression. For that only we have induction program, we have the regular course. No, no, we, how we should handle them? <laughs> I'll come to that. In fact, we have to see how the self-confidence can be ensured in the child. So we can see, yeah, let us see what is right evaluation. So what is right evaluation if you see, I can see that the purpose of every human being is the same. Inge, 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 inge. Yeah. The purpose of every human being is the same. Every human being wants to be happy and prosperous, wants to make the other happy and prosperous. So intention, that is natural acceptance or purpose is the same for every human being. This is something common to each one of us. Yep, yep. This is something that I can see. Correct. I can also see that the program to be happy is the same for one, one and all. My program is to understand harmony, to live in harmony. The same thing holds true for the other also. So my program is the same as yours, to be happy and prosperous. To understand harmony and to live in harmony. What is at all levels of being? Individual, family, society, nature and existence. The four levels. The world. Yeah. The world. The world and, and we can also see that every child, every human being has the same potential. Can you see this? Every human being, every self has the same potential. Every self has desire. Every self has thought. Every self has expectation. Every self has natural acceptance. Do you agree with that? <laughs> when they were born, they have the same potential. But as they grow, when they come to a college or something like that, you cannot assume they've got the same competence or the potential. That is competence. Oh, okay. <laughs> potential to suck. Okay, fine. For the potential to understand is there very much in every child. 
there was one student in IIT Kanpur. So in the first year he could not do well. So he was put on academic probation. So generally when the student's uh, grade point uh, is below 5 in a particular semester, then he is put on academic probation. So he was put on academic probation and when it happened, when it happened, what he used to do, he used to do two things. There is one game called counter strike. So A2 students will join together, all those who are depressed will join together and play counter strike. This is one common thing. And the second thing, they will watch movies at a stretch. And when this counter strike is played, they will not go to the washroom, they will not go to the mess, play for three to four days together. And, uh, so this kind of uh, this cycle that he had entered into, yeah. So in the third semester, we learnt about this and then we called him to the workshop, he came to the workshop. And then after that again, we could not meet him. So I thought that, okay, he attended the workshop and he has vanished. But then he came again after the second year was over and he told that in the fourth semester, he got 7.2. That was quite good and now he could come up. And then he got grade above 9, things like that. He kept on improving. And then after, in maybe in the fourth year, his father uh, died. So again, his academic suffered a bit. But when he came out of the program of BTEC, he had grade point above 7.5. So he was doing well that way. Then he joined one company, Reliance, in Delhi. And he was so responsible that when he made up his mind that now no longer I have to work in the company, I'll go and work fully for this program on human values. And he's doing that right now also. Then the manager said that I can't spare you like this. You first work for six months here more, train five more people like you, and then only leave. So the potential was very much there in him. But since he was not doing the right evaluation, he ran into depression. So that kind of possibility we can see in every child. The child does have the activity of expectation, does have the activity of thought, does have the activity of desire. Only that, you know, the self-exploration is not there. So this way we can see that every other human being is similar to me. All of us have the same intention, that is the purpose, same program to be happy, same potential to understand. If I am able to see this clearly, I am able to see that the other is similar to me. This is the minimum content of respect. So I am able to see that the other is similar to me. Okay. Now it would only be the matter of competence that we do not have the same level of competence. So on the basis of right evaluation of our mutual competence, I recognize our complementarity and fulfill it. So in every relationship, what is my role? To complement the other in terms of developing the competence in the other. So if I am able to see that the other has more understanding, is more responsible than me, then I am committed to understand from the other. This is the respect of the other. Isn't it? If I feel that I have more understanding, I am more responsible than the other, then first of all, I live with responsibility with the other, unconditionally, unperturbed by the behavior of the other. And then, I am committed to facilitate the understanding in the other, once the other is assured in relationship and not before that. So this is the complete content of respect. So being able to see that these three are the same in each one of us, there is no variation at all. Being a self is enough. I am a self, you are a self, every other human being is there as a self, isn't it, coexisting with the body. So we have the same purpose, program and potential. Our competence level may vary, that's all. And we have seen how competence level can improve through education, isn't it? So the program that comes out is the complementarity. So I can see that the other is similar to me and we are complementary. Now this way if I see, I respect every human being and I can be complementary to every other human being. I can also see for the criminal, a criminal who has committed a very heinous crime, he has the same purpose, program, potential. It's only that he did not get the right education, the right family, the right environment, for the right sanskar could not be there. And that's how he or she has been committing the crime, isn't it? And we can still be complementary. Yeah. Complimentary, yes. 
a relationship or situation in which two or more different things improve or emphasize each other's qualities. So the competence is the percent of imagination that is guided by natural acceptance, isn't it? Skill proficiency is something else. It helps us how to do this. So the communication is a skill, drawing is a skill, engineering is a skill, medicine is a skill, isn't it? The competence is the level of understanding. So if there is a doctor, the competence of doctor is decided by how much understanding he or she has. And the skill is decided by what kind of activities one can do. Similarly with an architect, similarly with an engineer, <coughs> isn't it? One may be you know, lacking in terms of right understanding, but still become a proficient you know, kind of a skilled worker. Yeah. Okay. Of respect. So if you look at the key takeaways, respect is right evaluation of a human being, of his or intention as well as competence. The basic human aspiration, that is intention or purpose, is based on the natural acceptance is the same. The human being is coexistence of self and body. The needs of both are different and fulfilled by different sources. The program and the potential of every self is the same. The other is similar to me and we are complementary to each other. This is the takeaway when I am able to see this. But again, I will say that this does take time for each one of us to understand it and live accordingly. But once I am able to at least start exploring, isn't it? Then my whole, whole perception about the other, my whole you know, approach towards the other gets transformed. So now we'll go for tea break yes. with this discussion. Yes. Feeling of trust and respect. With the feeling of trust, I can see that every human being intends to make me happy and prosperous. With the feeling of respect, I can rightly evaluate the level of competence of the other, including myself. When I'm able to rightly evaluate the other, then I'm able to accept the other in the relationship. And then I'm able to guide and support the other, isn't it? So we'll talk about others feeling, other feelings in the relationship. So this is the foundation, trust. And I want to see, for every human being, I am able to see very naturally that being a self is enough. He wants to be happy, he wants to make the other happy, that is all. And then I can evaluate the competence of the other with the feeling of respect. With this, when I am able to evaluate the other rightly, I am able to accept the other as he or she is. That is affection. So affection is feeling of being related to the other. Acceptance of the other as one's relative, the other is like me. So once I am able to accept the other, then what follows is the feeling of responsibility and commitment. Then I am responsible to the other. The way I can accept my child with the level of competence that he or she has, I can always accept the other human being in the society, in the family, that whatever be the level of competence, the other is my relative. With that acceptance, now I can guide the other, I can help the other develop, isn't it? I can be complementary to the other. So this feeling of acceptance for the other is affection. That happens only when I am able to rightly evaluate the other, being assured of the intention. If there is over, under, otherwise evaluation, then the acceptance is fluctuating. I over evaluate, I assume the other as mine. I under evaluate, I assume the other as something different, you know, not belonging to me, not as my relative, isn't it? So opposition, jealousy, these are all an indication of the absence of affection or avoiding the other, neglecting the other. This all happens because I am not able to accept the other as my relative. So with the feeling of trust and respect, this naturally follows. One parent came in the center that we have at Kanpur and said that we have a very serious problem in the family because he had a daughter who was elder and then uh, they had a younger son. So he said that this daughter is jealous of his, her, her younger brother and whatever is given to the son, she dislikes that gift and she like, dislikes that brother also. So 
we ask the daughter you know we try to have a dialogue with the daughter and said that what has happened to you why do you dislike your brother then she said that earlier when he was not there all the gifts were given to me now when he has come to the family nobody gifts to me they all come with gifts to him isn't it and it depends on him whether he gives to me or not so he has become my competitor so he said that yes this is something serious we have to take care of this so we told the parent that okay next time whenever something is gifted you ask the guest to give to the daughter and let her share with the younger brother so when the chocolate is gifted two chocolates are given she will give one to the other maybe she will give both the chocolates to the younger brother and the younger brother then and you know, a response by gifting one chocolate to the elder sister so if the acceptance is there in the relationship the affection is going to be there many times when we are not taking care of all such things then the jealousy may be there among our own children we are ignorant many times we are thinking that this you know older son or daughter is somewhat not having the right feeling and he or she is a villain trying to feel jealous of the you know younger brother or sister isn't it or maybe there are two sons in the family the elder son gets married next the younger son gets married both have wife if you are not able to see this feeling carefully then there may be jealousy among the wives of the two brothers earlier the keys of the house used to be in the hands of the elder daughter in law now they are in the hands of the younger daughter in law isn't it <laughs> so things like this are very important when we are able to see the relationship in the family closely yes what is the mutual fulfillment mutual happiness the world is a happiness there why don't you say why is a harmony there why do you want to put a new term and confuse us more and more <laughs> you, know, you know by doing this you know, yeah it so happens you know, that many times by using the same word again and again you miss out the meaning so you try to bring your attention back to the particular thing actually then it says mutual fulfillment of happiness fulfilling what is the question will come right when you say we can say you, this yeah uh, then one will say why happiness of what happiness of the self <laughs> then, then the, no, no. Then you have to go to the first question in that case. I agree with you, but I will ask the question. What only if you know if it is not addressed in the first phase? You have addressed happiness very clearly in the first slide itself. So we are very clear about that. Okay. So we yeah. won't ask any questions on that one. When you introduce new words, we don't know what exactly is yeah, fulfilling. Yeah. Okay. So we can fulfilling what? Yeah. Is the question? Yeah. yeah. So that means essentially happiness, mutual happiness in the relationship. So there is another issue, sir. Yeah. My uh, elder daughter used to say always. the first child is a uh, subject of experiment pardon first child is always a uh, subject of experiment so we apply everything on the first child uh, we find out which is better and that is given to the second uh, child so this is another issue happens the refinement of experience yeah obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact that has become an experiment because we are not being guided by our parents see in a family it is naturally expected that three generations are living together if that is there this kind of scenario will not emerge yeah take the mic Uh, but even if elders also don't know like for example what his point was like education system has changed uh, the type of schools what we put the type of uh, extra curricular activities what we put has changed so probably that's a also we will try to put them in some school and uh, we understand that is not working so we understood this is gone out second one will be very careful we'll put him in the right one like that uh, is what i think uh, we yeah, are trying to yeah so those things could be there but see if i have the feeling of affection i can always see the feeling in the other and then make the program if the daughter is feeling jealous of the brother it's not something to do wrong something wrong with the intention part something is happening in my conduct isn't it now with the feeling of affection i can take care of the body of the other i can also be able to guide the self of the other what happens for mobile <laughs> so with the feeling of affection 
I am able to be responsible and committed for nurturing and protecting the body of my relative. This is the feeling of care. So naturally, I take care of the body of the other. And I feel responsible and committed for developing the right understanding and right feeling in the other also, in the self of the other. So with the feeling of affection, naturally these two feelings will follow, care and guidance. Care of the body, guidance of the self. Now, if you make an appraisal of the current scenario, we may see that generally we assume ourselves to be the body, so the child also to be the body. So we feel that we are taking a lot of care of the child. But what we are doing essentially, we are feeding the child, force feeding the child. If the child is not eating, we are hitting the child. Sir, uh, my father used to say, when your uh, when a child is born, they are like Bharata uh, Lakshmanan, then who are Ramaba Lakshmana like that. But once they grow old, they become Wali Sukrivan. So, <laughs> now when this fighting when we are talking about, he used to say, Parakam Bodhu, Rama Lakshmana na Parakaranam Bhai. Ana Vaisa Ayrthuna Sandam Pudam Bodhu, they very, uh, just uh, become Wali Sukrivan. So, <laughs> This is what, uh, this fighting or jealousy or whatever we are... Uh, yeah, so the about. parents also have to evaluate themselves, you know? Uh. Why the children are turning like that? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Why the affection is getting lost with age? That is something that we have to see. Why the same brothers who were living together harmoniously in the childhood are fighting for property now? <laughs> Why? Why means the family? Each family will have a different uh, focus or what? Because the feeling of affection is not there. That's how... We cannot claim that all should be same uh, I'm not saying that. But if you are not able to guide the children properly, if you are not able to ensure the right understanding and right feeling the child... Also having a limit. Excuse me. You can never say affection is not there. Because when we had the first discussion itself, all the nine are permanent and stable. So you cannot change it. Let me, let me rephrase it for you, if I can. The affection is not being materialized by the correct competency level. That's what it is. Because, uh, you remember know the, no, no. You remember the nine, no. All the nine are not always permanent. So what we are saying, permanently permanent. no, no, wait. Permanently permanent. Now we have to understand that. What we are saying, those feelings are naturally acceptable to each one of us. But we may not have the competence to understand and live Correct. accordingly. Correct. Agreed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The competency is not there. Yeah. Competence is not there. So we naturally accept to develop the right understanding in the child. But if I am preconditioned, I precondition my child also. Isn't it? If I assume that money is everything, I train my child to assume that money is everything. Isn't it? I will cite one question. See, my, uh, earlier my elder daughter was uh, working somewhere and the uh, younger daughter uh, she was in hostel, still in hostel. Uh, the elder uh, used to take care of my younger daughter. So all affection, everything. Now uh, she is also in hostel doing higher studies. Uh, now that is missing. And whatever we uh, do for the younger, no, uh, it is always compared. The same, uh, you know, sisters. And she was taking care of the younger. But now the situation is different. So still affection is there. But uh, it does not, uh, you know, express in the right way. So when we, uh, you know, make a video call, earlier we used to make a video call, all will come in a conference call. So who should be, you know, addressed first? That's the issue. <laughs> See. So now we started making two separate calls. No, in fact, what we can do among children, we can let one child, the elder child, become like a parent to the younger child. If you do that, then the affection will be transferred. Otherwise, in, in place of affection, there would be jealousy. No, she was like that earlier, yeah. but now the situation is... Uh, so you can say different. that, yes, the older, elder son or elder daughter can start the communication first and let her communicate to the daughter, the next, you know, the young, get into picture. But in practical terms, the younger kids get a lot of attention. attention. More, more privilege, more, more, yeah. birth, more, more affection, more love. Always, always, always. So, again, again. But elders will always, no, but elder kids, because they're the first kid, they get everything first. When it is your first child, uh, you do like, for example, some of the comparisons, what even my children do. Uh, when the first kid, 
after I'm like, I'm the elder daughter in my house, so both are daughters. So for my, my son was the first son, so he was like whole family was very happy a son. So his uh, first hair saved, newspaper cutting saved, uh, photo saved, uh, you know, booties saved. Everybody is giving gifts, everything. But when the second child comes, <laughs> we won't do so much. I mean, you've already done everything we do, but it is not. A, so my daughter. Uh, she brought up that book, photo book. She said, here, there's a newspaper cutting here. It is not there. Why, my, 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 when I was born, there was no newspaper. Here, you have put a currency note. Here, it is not there. Why there is no currency note? That is, tend to happen. I mean, no. can happen. Uh, maybe because of our, uh, no, it's, our thing. It's also. all a different perception. Actually, same events, uh, as I said, uh, elder daughter says uh, experiments, right? But younger said uh, she got everything. But same incidents, right? Same actions, whatever. It's all about. So these may be various examples of over, under, otherwise evaluation. Yeah. <laughs> Something which is naturally acceptable to us, and we can see that this is a natural outcome of action. But are we really doing this in place of guiding the child properly? We be conditioning the child. You know, physical facility or money is the first priority in life. Nobody is trustworthy and things like that. We are wrongly conditioning the child. In place of nurturing the body of the relative, of the child, we might be even you know, uh, force feeding the child, making the child obese, or hitting the child to feed, things like that you are able to observe. So we have to see whether we ensure both care as well as guidance, or we are mostly focused on care, and there also we are not caring the body correctly. Why are all the children turning obese? Why do we have to hit the child to, f to eat? And when we are hitting the child, are we really respecting the self of the child or not? Isn't it? And then we'll see that we find many techniques of feeding the child. By enticing the child, by hitting the child, by making him afraid of lizards. So many ways and techniques we try to derive. Why is that so? Sir, you are talking about obese, obesity. Yeah. So obesity is a very uh, great problem, as you say. And this is all because of this uh, pizza, burger, or whatever food uh, we are now having. Of course, of course, all this has uh, been havoc those days. I don't know what is pizza. Even uh, when I when I when I were there, uh, I was there in uh, '97 in U.S. My wife was working, so I took uh, permission, holiday, uh, vacation I got uh, from our uh, university. Uh, 30 days, they gave me 45 days. So I went there. So, <laughs> there also, I was not uh, given, uh, I, I was not introduced to pizza. Now, this pizza 97, I didn't have, I didn't know, even though I was there in the uh, US for some time. When I came, this is recently, but I maybe. Who introduced pizza to your child? <laughs> no, no, this is a society. Again, I'm saying it is a society. Uh, may not be bringing... true. See, it yes, may sir. be the case that on his birthday, you brought pizza to the house. No, no, no. They are going to Pizza Hut. So there is a place called Pizza <laughs> Hut. So, <laughs> celebration of some uh, friend's birthday in Pizza Hut. So we are going and dropping the kid there. Then slowly they are ordering Domino's pizza or it is not a pizza nowadays are coming. It is coming home. Now Sugi and other things are uh, coming. And I, now I am also started eating that uh, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, yes, somehow we have to enjoy. How long we again going on scolding our children? Say pizza, pizza is not good for health. Agreed. Obesity is there. Agreed. But when we uh, have the, our children, uh, we cannot scold our children when they are uh, enjoying. See, may not, so, uh, we not are scold enjoying, the children, but who is forcing you to eat pizza? <laughs> nobody, nobody uh, forces here, but what I am saying, uh, we are enjoying. See, with the food. Uh, <laughs> see, the happiness. What? Yam butter in bum burger. Why? So that's uh, just. Uh, so, but that is what we spoke in the first, right? The tongue taste. Yeah, yeah. Because of taste, we should not spoil yeah. our body. This is what yesterday and all we were speaking. See, taste. So, uh, if parent does not have the right understanding, right feeling. No, my my, my wife, she won't like she won't like pizza, she won't uh, like burger, but uh, one <laughs> one portion of it, uh, maybe uh, four uh, four pieces are that uh, sizes will come. One they will keep for me. 
<laughs> so many uh, other items will come, sir, along with that. Uh, but uh, I, I like it. Uh, because... <laughs> uh, but my, my wife used to scold me. No, you don't give it to your father. He should not eat. What that. is the message that you want to convey? <laughs> Yeah. See, uh, what, what I'm coming to say here, see, obesity, even though food pizza and all are not good for health, we are also agreeing, that is accepting, accepting what and all. No, no, uh, no, no, no. See, ultimately, we have yes, to sir. work for right understanding, right feeling. Unless I have the right understanding in me, how yeah. I can communicate to the child? No, sir, child I'm are all saying grown that up. Big pizza is not up. having right understanding. I'm just giving an example that how do I get conditioned? How do I get enslaved? by something from outside, whether it is for now, taste or for something else. They are all adults now, so we cannot uh, teach no, them. No, no. Now <laughs> they are called to a stage. Anyway, anyway, let me proceed with this. Yeah. I'll, uh, let me proceed because there is some limitation of time. So with the feeling of affection, I naturally have the feeling of care and guidance, care of the body and guidance for the self. Now with this feeling, I am able to see that there have been people in the tradition, in the history, there are people in the society maybe who are having completeness of right understanding. When I look at them, I get a feeling of reverence for them. Isn't it? So we are able to remember people who have been there in the tradition, in our history, whom we uh, you know, feel that they had the completeness of right understanding, right feeling. So the natural feeling that comes for me, in, in me for them is reverence. So this acceptance, the feeling of acceptance for excellence is reverence. So the rev excellence is completeness of right understanding. <clears throat> so when we are talking about that imagination, when the whole imagination is guided by right understanding, then that is being excellent. When I see such people, when I learn about such people, when I hear about such people, I naturally have a feeling in me that let me also be like them. That is the feeling of reverence. What is the what is the definition you said for the respect, please? Can you please go back? Reverence. No, respect. I know this reference. Respect, respect is right evaluation. Right in evaluation. Okay. Now here I can see that there are people the who... Completeness of, right. completeness of right understanding. So I accept that completeness of right understanding. When I am able to see that there is completeness in all terms, right understanding and right living. So I get emulate, I get inspired by such people. I try to be like them. Isn't it? And we can also see that working for excellence and competing with each other is not the same thing. In excellence, I try to help the other to bring to my level. But when I compete, I hinder the other most of the time to reach the level. So the competition and excellence are two different things. In education, whether we are aiming for excellence or we are trying to compete, every child in the class can become excellent. But every child cannot come first. Isn't it? So whether we are aspiring to come first or we are aspiring to understand the subject properly. Ask the kids, they say you want the grades. We don't care about the grades. They want the grades. Yeah, yeah. Because the child is not able to relate the content of education to one's happiness. If I learn electrical engineering completely, will it make me happy? No. So I do not feel motivated. See, what we learn during B.Tech, we seldom apply in our job also. One person has studied civil engineering and now working for software, doing you know, this data feeding. How is that related? Not related. So somehow we have to see that we are not able to work for excellence in our education. Another feeling which is acceptable to me naturally is the feeling of glory. So I am able to see that there have been people who might not have been able to achieve excellence in completeness, but they have made a sincere effort. They invested themselves for justice in the society, for ensuring prosperity in every family, for ensuring right understanding within oneself, for working for right education. When I remember such people, I feel, and I have a feeling of glory for them. So glory is the feeling for those who have made effort for excellence. Similarly, I can see that there are people who have made effort for my excellence. They may be my teachers, my parents, my friends. When I remember their efforts, I feel grateful to them. Isn't it? See, if the teacher is able to develop the right understanding in me, I feel grateful to the teacher you know, forever. 
if the teacher has shared the right feeling with me i feel grateful for a longer time maybe but if the teacher has only developed skills in me for physical facilities the feeling of gratitude comes and goes so ultimately you know excellence is right understanding and i have this feeling of gratitude for those who have made effort for my right understanding and right feeling this is very natural i do not have to develop it separately it comes naturally because it is something acceptable to me naturally you know we remember our parents and the way they have made effort for developing ourselves we feel grateful to them so feeling for those who have made effort for my excellence i can see that the other has a feeling of care affection trust in behavior with me i can also see that the other has helped me in developing the right understanding and right feeling has provided me with the necessary physical facility so this gratitude is a significant development of relationship isn't it so you have to putting the first priority physical facility and setting aside the relationship the child in my relationship is also not able to feel grateful to me isn't it when you say gratitude is when you say gratitude is significant in the development relation what is the significant means you know significant means the... it helps develop the other okay helps us okay fine yeah. okay but significant means is a predominant role to play no, that's no. why i got confused okay fine okay thanks so if you look at the child the child may not be able to get into dialogue like this but the child is able to note how you are taking care how you are guiding and the child is able to accept you know you as yeah with the right feeling <coughs> so we can just ask this is something that we ask our students also are you able to appreciate both what has been done as well as what has not been done or mostly focused on what has not been done maybe the parents paid the fee but they are not able to pay for the laptop the students may turn you know somewhat opposed to the parents that they have not done anything for me see we are getting so much of news how the children are murdering their parents in lucknow the mother did not pay for the game the gambling game that the child was playing and she was scolding the child this child cut her into pieces packed into the fridge now i'm just saying that unless we are able to develop the right understanding this gratitude may not be there in the child and if you are just feeding the child just providing physical facility to the child but not respecting the child maybe i am providing physical facility to the child but every time is scolding the child finding faults in the child cornering the child you see you are good for nothing you see the son of the other you know parent what they are doing but this way audio doesn't deserve a question like that pardon this audio doesn't deserve a question like that because you always think what they are what the people are telling for us <laughs> yeah i'm just saying that if i'm not children observant might about this children might not not done also we think if that was done but we are given i agree with that but the whole thing you do one or two sometimes like that but majority of the time you are very thankful to god and thankful to your parents and thankful to everything right? but our children may not be na i'm like that not that but we also have to see whether this feeling of gratitude is getting transferred to the next generation or not generation exactly that's a good question that's the thing so yeah in fact if our priority is not right in life we are not giving the first priority to right understanding right feeling only giving priority to physical facility for example the child will not feel related that way you see in punjab so many startups are coming the way we have annual maintenance contract for our machines the washing machine the television or the machines they amc is for the parents for so the children are living in canada and australia the companies are there to take care of the old parents it is called amc annual maintenance contract they are paid they come daily you know just observe the health feed them go back whenever something happens as per the contract they give the facility in the old age homes are like yeah so it is said no that where is your elder son he is in england where is your younger son he is in new york where are you i am in old age home Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. You, you cannot say if you have got the right understanding, 
if i am a older person and i am saying old age i will never say i am happy i will never complain that son because i got a very clear understanding exactly that he has to take care of himself and he has done the right thing for himself and i am doing that I, whatever i could do right now either i can stay by myself and take out or it's, I, old home is fine with me i am happy about it so why there is a problem with having saving an old age home nothing wrong i am happy wherever i am he is happy that i am there very safely with all the old age people so what's the issue there continue huh <laughs> Yeah. If that is fine, then continue. I am yeah. saying, is this what is necessary? I don't think it's something, something wrong. See, again, you have to think yourself as to what's the relationship, what's the affection, and what's the right feeling about it. If you got the right feeling, there's nothing that really says, you know, there's a situation. See, we okay might have a situation. feeling that we cannot be happy living together. If this is the feeling, then there is something wrong with the relationship. If I have a feeling that we cannot be happy living together, then maybe i have not fulfilled the relationship rightly wanted to put an explanation over here uh, my dad's uh, more best friend and uh, we both uh, i am from tirunelveli so next to next uh, my dad and my dad's friend felix sir we used to call him he is a chemistry professor uh, right now he is not well and all his four uh, two daughters and two sons they are there in uk all four are doctors each one different specialization now uh, dad is not well all four of them they are all the round uh, each month they are putting leave and coming and taking care of their dad and my dad he used to visit once a month his friend <laughs> therefore there are people like that <laughs> Yeah, percentage will be too less, but so that is something to do with the appraisal of the current the, scenario. That is what parents brought up, how they yeah. have brought up their children with the values. That is there. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, sir. Yeah, Felix Pakinathan, and my father is Professor in Baraj, yeah. Maria Rol in Baraj from Mathematics Department. Saint Xavier's, both are from Saint Xavier's. And uh, to Murali sir's question, sir, uh, that is the elder daughter and younger daughter. In our home, we are five. Everyone, most of the mechanical faculty knows, and I am the fourth. In the daughters, I am the middle one. Okay, elder one will be getting almost all. Younger one will be treated like in college days. I'll be doing, no. okay. Early morning by five o'clock or by four o'clock, keep out and uh, sprinkle the water and everything. That work is mine. Both my sisters, younger and elder, will be sleeping like anything. They will never ever scold, right? But there is a moment when uh, all the nearby people. entire street lanes they will be calling my mom as priya mom <laughs> so she got angry my elder one my sister now she is in loyala prabha she told me uh, why everyone are calling priya mom why not my they are not influencing my name prabha mom like likewise the elders will start and next phase will be coming to you while going for the alliance looking for the lands my uh, own L -A -A -A, elder one she was telling if you look for priya you will look for an it right a professional why not me alone as since i have done my literature you will go with the science part because of that they go, well, saw the lands and got married to a doctor right uh, yes but now things it is totally different all these happenings will come uh since we are five in number we know pros and cons of each and every one and our dad he balanced us with the values so i am an easy going one so i never thought whatever it is it is there whatever it is there for me i'll be getting it yes. sir thank you uh, that morley don't worry here i am there to help you <laughs> i am the eighth person so <laughs> I had have told five only. I hope maybe exceeding eight anybody is here. I don't know. <laughs> so I have five brothers and two sisters there. 
no problem for me. I enjoyed my life because everything will be taken care of by all sisters and brothers. Now, even now, I'm enjoying my department. When I uh, joined here, I see my, my, my Kingsley sir, all my, like, my brothers. So they are all taking care of all work. So I'm just enjoying the department. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Leela is here and others, the elders are there. So I see them as my brother. So just uh, yeah, leave, how these to that. values? So uh, that is how I uh, uh, I'm enjoying everything. Yes, yeah, sir. How these values it has impacted me is my uh, mom was seven seventh person, last one. So she had. Uh, three sisters along with her and four brothers. So my mom will be so humble, simple because when she got married immediately both mom and dad, uh, grand, my uh, grandparents were not there. So whatever my dad, he takes the control and in my dad's side, uh, four, my father was the first one to lead the family and uh, three brothers and one sister. That, is, that was the thing, so we too have a bigger one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now let us come to this. Yeah. To have the feeling of being related to none, one, many or everyone. Yeah, so none is not acceptable to me naturally. When I feel related to one or many, it is affection. But with the development of competence in me, I can see myself being related to all. This feeling of being related to all is the completeness of feeling in relationship, that is love. No, being human is enough. See, I can have the love for the entire humanity. When you go back, you don't do any contribution and all everything to be very successful relationship. And you don't do anything with them, right? The love yeah, for so all is, is in what? In fact, I'll come to that. I have one question. What is it? Assignment. Assignment. What is it? Assignment. What is it? Assignment. Because, see, I am related, but I am not able to see the relationship. Isn't it? The example that we're taking, I want to get out of the room through the door, but I'm not able to see the door. So I'm colliding with the wall. So this head trade, opposition, are there because I'm not able to see the relationship as it is. In fact, as uh, family is the last one. Everyone, the feeling of being related to all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this love is the feeling of being related to all, but we may not be able to see the feeling correctly. So we may have preconditionings. <laughs> So one may try to see the feeling of love and at the level of sensation of preconditioning and that may confuse the, confuse the person. So if you look at the imagination, it may be misguided by preconditioning or sensation and then there could be several mistakes in observing the relationship. So in place of observing love, one may get into lust when one is trying to derive sensation from the other, isn't it? So the students might be using this word love, but ultimately it may be something like lust. You know, getting attracted to the other on the basis of body or sensation. Or there could be some preconditioning like love at first sight. <laughs> By this age, I must have girlfriend or boyfriend. The other has four, I have only one. Isn't it? If that is the case, then it is not love. In the movies also, boys school and a girl school, we never had a boyfriend or girlfriend at that time. Yeah, in the movies also, in the media, you will see that see, these kinds of things are very prevalent. You know, they will see, they will show that you know, this person has love for the other. But love is not something that is for one person. It is something for the entire humanity. At the most, it can be affection. Instead of lust, you should be infatuation. Okay. It is here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> situation becomes a preconditioning. It's a lust. It's a, it's it's a, it's a, in fact you don't get it generally as a preconditioning word. It is lack of right feeling. Somebody, you see somebody only you have infatuation, right? So that has to be a sensation in that case. It, it is, cannot be the bottom. It is lack of right feeling, so it cannot be precisely defined. That I agree with. That. <laughs> you can't just throw something in. Infatuation is a sensation. Yeah. So we can put here also. We can put here also. And ultimately, we have to see that this is lack of right feeling. 
and you can see in the colleges no you will see that students will have this kind of dependence on sensation of preconditioning and when they are not successful they form an association it is called as fossla frustrated one sided lover association so, so, so infatuation can be replaced by societal pressure, also assumption. Then all the three will come. No, no, no. It's not due to the pressure of society. It is ultimately the pressure of oneself, one's own preconditioning. No, the other has four and I have four. I have, I have none. Nobody is forcing you to go for four. <laughs> so right understanding if I have for the natural acceptance, I can see that love is the feeling of being related to all because I naturally accept within me being related to all, every human being, isn't it? As I get the feeling of trust within, as I am able to respect all, I naturally feel related to all. Just the other person is a human being is enough for me to feel related. It's not that I am going to differentiate. When I do not have the feeling of love, then I might differentiate. When I'm not respecting, I might differentiate on the basis of gender, on the basis of physical facility, on the basis of belief systems, isn't it? But with the feeling of love, there is no differentiation. Being a human being is enough. Yeah. The, the feelings you had so far, I thought about nine, right? Starting with uh, trust. Yeah. So I thought that every level, yeah, every level, it goes up. In the, in the understanding yeah. and mutual respect. But oh. love here, when you say, let me just come back and define love. Feeling of being related to all is the very basic rudimentary one. It's not the one that you had it for affection. It starts with respect, trust. Reverence are not there. No, 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 in fact, it starts with trust. When I'm assured of intention of the other, then I'm able to rightly evaluate the competence. I agree. I don't know. Up, to, up to reverence and respect, I all agree. But when you come to love, the definition of love you have doesn't seem to be strong enough that it is the it is the end of the feeling. No, the completeness, other. not end. Completeness, the com but it says the completeness here. There's no word as completeness here. In the previous stage, you had completeness of everything there. There's no completeness in this definition here at all. When I say all, what is above all? Related to all. That is the whole world, the whole world. That is what everyone is thought. To all means here, everyone. Yeah. That's all. But doesn't mean the completeness there. In the other side, you've got completeness, deeper understanding. Very clearly, you mentioned everything. But here, it seems we just... <laughs> <laughs> see, when I want to see myself being related to all, what remains? No, I think you have taken only a... Uh, One-third, one-third, no, one-third of the total sentence. Just read the remaining Yeah. But, See, once trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, they are all ensured within, then the feeling of being able to all follows very naturally. Continuously. Yeah. Continuously. Respect, you will not do that. Then this is not the case. Not this that. is something that news that we got in, but, but according to in a newspaper. It's all incremental. It doesn't mean the entire world. A group of people, assuming. Uh, That's what I think, a subset. Yeah. Whom you know of. Yeah. This is the feeling of being related to all, and this is the complete value. Complete value. Yeah. So from one, it goes to many, and then goes to everyone. And this feeling of love is the foundation of undivided society. There is no division in me for the other. On any basis, on the basis of gender, caste, creed, region, there is no differentiation in me. I accept the other as my relative. That is the height of feeling of relationship, completeness of feeling of relationship. So when we see somebody living with the feeling of love, I have the feeling of reverence for the other. Isn't it? So sir, we keep up to here. Yes, sir. We call unbased. So now what you have given here about love, uh, maybe for uh, previous slide we were mentioning uh, four states, some uh, maximum this thing happened. But uh, what we generally say, anbe sivam, means everywhere love is there. So that, that's why it is universal and uh, God is omnipresent. So everywhere God is there. So wherever God is there, love is there. Wherever love is there, God is there. It is what, <laughs> but here, the meaning of love, maybe it is in uh, the other... Uh, Are you agreeing with this or disagreeing? <laughs> no, no, sir. No, I am I'm, I'm focusing... I am focusing that uh, love, which is nothing but 
um, God. That's all. Uh. Okay. Now, uh, what I do? We have an assignment here. So.